Welcome back. So we're going to create a couple of little quick prototypes here. And um, this is what I usually do when I'm like just getting out of wireframing or I've wireframed a new interaction or a new flow. Uh, I essentially just kind of jump right into Figma with my wireframes and I just link some quick things together. I, sometimes I don't necessarily link together a massive prototype unless I'm trying to test end to end usability. But what I usually do is like link together some flows that make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to link together a search experience and then we'll link together just some navigation pieces. So we have some places to go and we'll kind of use some of the things we learned like with scrolling and stuff like that. So let's jump right in. What we're going to start with is our little search. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click prototype and we are going to do on tap. So when the user taps that we're going to navigate to so no scrolling behavior yet. We're going to navigate to search. Let's call this one search type ahead. Okay, and we're actually going to take this out of here. That's going to be its own frame. And you know what we're going to do here is we're just going to go on tap, we're going to go navigate to home, where is home? Boom, perfect. And on delay. So I, I just want to kind of link together what this search experience could look like. And this is what I would do if I were working on this client project. I urge you to kind of get your wireframes. You can use these wireframes in your resources and you can actually design with me and prototype with me. Okay, so after delay 800 milliseconds, I think that's fine. We're gonna open the overlay and that overlay is going to be this. And that's gonna come from the, it's gonna be locked to the bottom center. You can click outside and close it. And the animation, you can have it as move in. We can get into animations in a later lesson when we cover micro interactions and motion and stuff like that. That is gonna be some really cool stuff and I'll show you what you can do with Figma. Right now I don't think it's necessarily needed, but it can help stimulate certain things like quick move ins and move outs and all that kind of stuff in terms of like how things behave on the screen. You can start thinking about that and you should definitely start thinking about that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have that come up and the behavior on here is okay. So if I search, I want this to come up again. So it's going to actually behave like an overlay. You'll notice that Figma already does the work for you, which is amazing. So move in. Okay, perfect. And what we'll do here is if I do tap on here, I want to actually have this come in. Yeah, that's fine. No, actually, I want this to be instant. Yeah, I think that's cool. This will link back on top, navigate to, and it's going to navigate to our home screen. Perfect. And if I click on this, actually, you know what? Let's make a frame. So I have those as a frame, so it'll be one large toppable area. And we're gonna actually go to our search results and that'll be instant as well. This is gonna go back to our home as well. Remember, this is not changing at all. The only thing that's changing is the content within. So we kind of have to simulate that behavior a bit. Okay, so this is navigating back to home. Perfect. If we do want to search, I do want to go back to here. That looks good. Okay. I think that's good. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So as you can see, like once you're done linking together some things, oops, this should go to home. Perfect. And yeah, okay. So you'll notice that once we kind of link together some things, it gets really messy really quickly. And you can imagine on the larger prototype, it'll just be like complete chaos. 
it really depends what your goal is. I feel like the main use for prototyping is to validate your assumptions. You know, use them with users, get good feedback from clients. You don't necessarily need to make like an end-to-end -end prototype from beginning to end of all your designs, especially if you have a large product that it's kind of crazy. So what I would do is I would kind of break it into pieces, maybe different flows that you want to highlight, things that aren't maybe as clear, like certain interactions, like maybe how this could play out. Especially when you get to the high fidelity stage, you may want to consider like uh, actually, you know, creating more like in-depth animations in motion. So it's totally up to you and what your workflow may be. Um, but I would try to avoid creating like a crazy huge prototype. I mean, there's not many use cases for it. The big one would be to show your developers. But if you're working really closely with them throughout your entire product, like every day in terms of like your sprints, or if you're just working from like the beginning of uh, like kickoff with the development team, all the way to like the end of handoff, you're essentially, they know what's going on and you should be really communicating all these little things. They shouldn't need to wait all the way till the end of the design process to get like a fully animated prototype. Even though that is pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We're gonna press play. Oops, I am still in comment mode over here. Okay, so we're just gonna remove that so we can see search. So I'm gonna click on search and there's my keyboard. I'm actually gonna click search again. Oh, so I moved in from the right. So we can go back and fix that. So let's just, I want that to come in from the bottom. Okay, so if we just test that. Cool, I love it. Okay, and if we do that, we have our results. Perfect, I love it. And then we can go back if we want, or we can actually, I think we're missing something really cool here. Yep, so you should be able to, if we think through the flow of this, if I wanna search again, I should be able to search again. So let's actually do that. We're going to, on tap, we are going to actually, if we link right there, it'll open the overlay for us again, perfect. And okay, so if I do wanna search, um, actually, I feel like this one should actually go here. Okay, so let's get going. Let's see what it looks like. Search, love it. Okay, and I'm going to click that. So that animation's a little wonky. So if I go back and I click that, it should just be instantaneous. Okay, so if I click search, actually I would probably want to come here maybe. Okay, so I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. You know, you may want to, uh, certain things to happen all the time or certain er overlays to happen all the time. And that's where you kind of just have to have a really good discussion with your developers. And there we go. We kind of have like a little product flow. What we can do is we can clean this up. Like we, if we do want to have a navigation sticky to the bottom, so we'll remember to fix that positioning. We can also fix this positioning if we want. We're going to actually create a frame. Let's do this. Perfect. And we're going to fill that with white. Okay, and we're just going to call this header. Okay, boom, boom, boom. This line 18, so. Okay, perfect. So that's in there as well. And we can actually fix this to the top. So we can, yeah, perfect. We can fix that to the top and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go through that search flow. Perfect. Buttons. If I were to scroll, I would see that the content goes uh, behind both the header and the footer. So there we go. We have our little own search prototype. If we want to go back, we can go back to the home page. I mean, this is not perfect by any means, but okay. So we can see that we have our keyboard here. Keyboard's a little weird and wonky, but that's totally cool. And we can just click a result and it'll bring us to a results page. Perfect. So that's an easy way to create like a very quick flow. 
in terms of different types of like uh, search interactions that we have. Actually, we can extend this some more. So if we do click that, I would love this to come in. This could be like a uh, navigate to, it could be instant, doesn't matter. We could just uh, on top, we can go back. I want this to be stickied. Perfect, we can even make this sticky, but it's all right for now. Let's take a look at that one more time. And there we go, we got our filters. Boom, and I would have this be dynamic based off of the different types of filters. So you can even go in and make a smaller prototype. This can update based off of that prototype, which is really cool. Okay, and that's it. That's how you create a quick prototype within Figma, just using a quick flow. And in the next video, we're just gonna kind of get a little bit more in depth in terms of like uh, different types of interactions.